There's a Japanese concept that's really close to my heart. It's called Ikigai. It literally means a reason for being, although it's probably better understood if you picture a Venn diagram with four overlapping circles, each of them being what you love, what you're good at, what you can be paid for, and what the world needs. That area where all four circles overlap is where you can find your Ikigai. Now, I was lucky enough to find mine early on in high school. And for me, it was fairly straightforward. My Ikigai is sustainability. It goes without saying that high school can be a pretty stressful time between managing social life, family commitments, college applications, football practice, and scholarship essays. Add to this the fact that society expects us to choose a career that we're supposed to spend the rest of our lives working on, even though we're still told we have to ask permission to go to the bathroom. I'm here to talk about that choice in particular, and how, regardless of the career choices you'll soon take, or that you made a while ago, you can align your career to help solve climate change. Allow me to explain. The climate, the climate crisis is a systemic issue that, in order to be solved, must be viewed through the lens of systems thinking. As any climate scientist would tell you, almost all greenhouse gas emissions come from six key sectors. Electricity generation, agriculture and land use, transportation, buildings, industry, and other energy-related emissions. Not all emissions come from running our air conditioners or driving our gas guzzlers, but also from how we design our buildings and the materials that we use to build them, how we manufacture our goods, and most critically, what we eat, how we grow it, and how we treat the land where it's grown. Accordingly, it's only logical that the solutions and the opportunities we have to decrease emissions are intrinsically linked to these six sectors. Yes, we do need to deploy solar panels, wind turbines, and electric cars all around, but we also need to completely redesign our food supply chain, quite literally from the ground up. Also, the way we commute between home, work, and school, the way we manufacture stuff, and many other things we need to do to solve it. The good news is that there are plenty of opportunities for jobs and careers throughout this transformation. The climate crisis is, in large part, an issue of infrastructure. Because of this, us engineers are going to have our hands full over the next few decades, because we completely need to transform the infrastructure that keeps us warm in winter, cool in summer, and connected 24-7. What's required is nothing less than a World War II scale mobilization to completely transition away from fossil fuels to, towards cleaner, safer, and frankly, more affordable sources of energy like solar and wind. At the same time, the electricity grid that connects us to these sources has to be upgraded so that it can, transition, so that it can transport electrons more efficiently, more flexibly, and more resiliently. Lucky for us, this means that there's plenty of work to do. By some estimates, every million dollars invested in renewable energy and energy efficiency creates three times more jobs than the same amount invested in fossil fuels, at a similar pay for the same amount of electricity. It's also important to remember, however, that this transition not only benefits engineers with a university degree, but also other professionals like electricians, plumbers, and construction workers that can, that can help make homes and buildings more efficient, and more sustainable. People currently working in the fossil fuels will likely have to reevaluate their careers. But the tasks they do today on a daily basis are actually not too dissimilar from activities that the energy transition requires. For example, oil companies are perfectly positioned in both infrastructure and expertise to deploy offshore wind turbines throughout our coasts instead of mining them for oil. 
Similarly, currently existing oil and gas pipelines can be retrofitted to pump renewably sourced hydrogen, the lightest of elements and our most promising solution to cleanly power our airplanes, ships, and heavy industry. Lastly, in, a, in an ironic twist, it may seem like the deposits and caverns that used to hold vast quantities of these fossil fuels will come in handy if we find a way to store carbon back into the ground. This, of course, as a backup for natural sinks like forests and oceans that have been managing carbon since life on this planet began. But not everything is an engineering problem. Life would be much more boring if it was. And the opportunities don't end there. This crisis is too big for only engineers to solve it. How about healthcare workers? Doctors and nurses have an important role to play too. Besides keeping us healthy, they play a critical role in, clima in climate by providing access to reproductive health services. By providing us with the guidance necessary to plan a family or plan not to have one, healthcare workers are helping us alleviate society's demand on natural resources. Teachers and educational institutions can contribute in a similar fashion, particularly when it comes to educating girls. The link between educating girls and society's overall well-being couldn't be clearer. Women with more years of education have fewer and healthier children and actively manage their reproductive health. Not to mention the fact that they also achieve higher salaries, greater social mobility, and lower maternal mortality rates. Researchers at Project Drawdown estimate that by making schools affordable, and providing rep reproductive health services, universal education and family planning are some of the most impactful solutions we can take to solve climate change, even before rooftop solar and net zero buildings. But it doesn't stop there. Environmental journalists can help us communicate and understand the many ways climate change touches every aspect of our lives, from political elections to geopolitics refugee crisis, and climate, and, and climate amplified disasters like hurricanes, droughts, and floods. Writers, filmmakers, and artists can also help us communicate the problem and the solutions. Already a new genre, climate fiction, or cli-fi, is helping us imagine ways in which we'll adapt to the world that we're creating. We also need lawyers, policymakers, and politicians that understand the severity of the crisis we're in, and that they can support policies that create jobs, reduce inequality, and protect the environment at the same time. How's that for getting voter support? Like climate activists usually say, yes, changing your light bulbs is good for the environment, but it's even better if you change your senator. Economists and accountants have an important role to play, too. There's an increasing need to measure and assign a value to the ever-increasing costs of climate, climate in action. Similarly, the benefits of climate solutions must be properly measured and communicated if there's any way society at large can adopt them. It's only a matter of time before a global carbon, carbon market becomes reality. Who do you think will benefit the most from this carbon market? Farmers, of course. Not all of the solutions have to do with high-tech so, uh, technologies and, so, and futuristic solutions, like solar or hydrogen. Some of the most important ones, in fact, are nature-based, like regenerative agri agriculture, ocean farming, and silvopasture. By sequestering carbon in the soil at the same time they grow our food, farmers can, with the proper market mechanisms, add a second revenue stream while healing the soils our food system relies on. Speaking of food, a few years ago, nobody would have believed there can be such a thing as a climate nutritionist. But by prescribing diets that reduce our reliance on meat and animal-based products, nutritionists and dietitians can contribute too by helping people eat in a way that's good for them and for the planet. And what about psychologists? Well, it's impossible to work in climate 
without having an emotional reaction to what, to what is being lost. Climate anxiety, climate grief, climate depression are all new recently diagnosed psychological conditions that more and more people suffer from as our impacts on the planet are better understood. When dealing with loss of a planetary scale, we need psychological support so we can deal with that grief in a constructive manner. To paraphrase one of my favorite, favorite climate scientists, Dr. Kate Marvel, we need courage, not hope, to tackle climate change. Grief, after all, is the cost of being alive. We are all fated to live lives shot through with sadness and are not worth less for it. Courage is the resolve to do well without the assurance of a happy ending. Little molecules, random in their movement, add together to a coherent whole. Little lives do not. But here we are, together on a planet radiating ever more into space where there is no darkness, only light we cannot see. One of the most exciting things about working in this field is that it's about solving problems that we would still want to solve even if the climate crisis didn't exist. But it does exist, so solve it we must. The good news is that we can make a living out of it. The climate crisis is as big as a crisis can get, and we need all hands on deck to solve it. The solutions and opportunities are broad ranging and encircle all fields of expertise. There should be no shortage of motivation. Solving the climate crisis represents the single largest opportunity our generation has to generate wealth, create jobs, and improve our relationship with the planet that keeps us alive. Now, I'd like to go back to Ikigai, the concept I introduced at the beginning. I described it as being the overlap between what we love, what we're good at, what we can get paid for, and what the world sorely needs. Asking children what they want to be when they grow up misses the point. A better way of framing the discussion is asking instead what kind of problems they would like to solve. In this sense, I cannot think of a bigger problem to solve than climate change. And we can, regardless of our career choices, contribute in our own way. Over these few minutes, I've laid out just a few examples of how you can be a part of the solution. But there are many more. To quote Octavia Butler, there's no single answer that will solve all of our future problems. There's no magic bullet. Instead, there are thousands of answers, at least. You can be one of them, if you choose to be. <laughs>